Hey, brand builder, Rory Vaden here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this interview. As always, it's our honor to provide it to you for free and wanted to let you know there's no big sales pitch or anything coming uh, at the end. However, if you are someone who is looking to build and monetize your personal brand, we would love to talk to you and get to know you a little bit and hear about some of your dreams and visions and share with you a little bit about what we're up to to see if we might be a fit. So if you're interested in a free strategy call with someone from our team, we would love to hear from you. You can do that at brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall, brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall. We hope to talk to you soon. I love the fire that Todd Durkin brings to the microphone and to the camera, man. Uh, I'm a I'm a fan. This guy's enthusiasm and and positivity and his energy that he brings it is contagious. And as a friend, as a client, as a colleague, I am uh, I really have enjoyed my time around Todd Durkin. And I the interview that we did. If you didn't get a chance to listen to it, go back and listen to it yourself. You'll catch a bit of his energy. And just his intensity, which I I really really loved, and you know as always, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm I'm taking these interviews and sharing back with you things that I'm being reminded of, things that I'm learning myself, the ways that I'm internalizing or processing what has just happened during that interview, and uh, today's no different. Uh, this is inspired, you know, by all this this conversation with Todd. But uh, I boiled this down to what I want to share with you are three elements of mental toughness. These are three kind of pieces of your, these are three parts of your mindset that you have to get right if you're ever going to really be mentally tough. And I think these are three things that people don't actually do very well. Like these are three very rare things. These are three things that are unfortunately uncommon amongst most people in the world. But among the elite, among the top one percenters, among what we would call the ultra performers, I refer to them and take the stairs uh, in my first book as ultra performers or in my second book, uh, uh, Procrastinating on Purpose, we call them multipliers. You know, today we might just call them like mega influencers, but these ultra performers, there's the thing you got to understand is that it is their mind that is the the magic is in the mind, right? It's not their skills so much. And, and it's it's that there's mental conditioning. It's like that story I shared about Navy SEAL Joe. The, the human body can take damn near anything. It's the mind that needs conditioning. So here's three elements of mental toughness. Um, first one, something that you need to understand if you're going to be successful in anything, is that the intensity of your discipline needs to match the magnitude of your dream. The intensity of your discipline needs to match the magnitude of your dream. This is one of the biggest problems we have in the world today is there's people, you know, you see all these dreams and like people, all these fake fluencers online who are showing like, oh, these cars and these private jets and these homes. And so it's like, oh, we all have these dreams and we have this huge dream and yet we have this weak level of discipline. That is a recipe for failure, right? That's a recipe for disaster or it's at least a recipe for a broken heart or unmet expectations. You can't have a huge dream and very weak discipline. The intensity of your discipline needs to match the magnitude of your dream. Big goals are for people with big work habits, right? Right. I'm all about having big goals. I'm all about dreaming big. I'm all about you know achieving the impossible. I'm all about going for the thing that no one else says you can do. But you better show up and put in the work. Like you better show up and be ready to play. You better show up and say, I am willing to do what no one else is willing to do so that I can have what no one else is going to have. That's the mindset of an ultra performer. I'm not saying you have to like it. I'm not saying it's fun. I'm certainly not saying it's easy. I'm saying that's what it takes. That's how it is, right? Also, I would say, and I've, I've said this several times before, discipline becomes dormant in the absence of a dream. Discipline becomes dormant in the absence of a dream. So 
part of increasing your discipline is increasing your dream. Because if you don't have a clear dream, if you don't have a clear picture, then there is no reason for you to make the sacrifice. And so the human brain left to its own default, to its own design, will naturally gravitate towards the path of least resistance. This is escalator mentality thinking, which is where the title of the Take the Stairs book, my first book, even comes from, right? So you have to, if you want to increase your discipline, one of the ways to increase your discipline is to increase the dream, because then you go, ah, now I have a reason to do it. Now I have a reason to make the sacrifice, but discipline goes dormant in the absence of a dream. So if you're struggling with discipline, it might just be, you don't have a big enough dream, but so step one is like have the dream. But then step two is make sure that the level of your discipline matches the magnitude of your dream. That is a connection that ultra performers understand. Most people do not. Most people will never get it. I mean, literally go to the mall, walk around. You can look at world or look, go to a stadium. Look at most of the people there are never going to make the connection that I am talking about that I just shared with you. But a 100%, 100% of the world's wealthiest people, most successful people, highest performing people, top achievers, top athletes, top actors, top singers, 100% of those people will have made that connection. So if you want to be one of those people, I recommend you understand that and you make that connection. Number two, the power of community. I loved what Todd was saying when he said, hire an appointment with a trainer, right? Like hire a trainer if for no other reason than to create the accountability in your life to show up and exercise, to show up and work out. If you don't have the self-discipline to get up and exercise and do what you need to do, then hire a trainer for no other reason than to, to make sure you show up, right? Like there is power in accountability. There's power in community. And if you're not where you want to be in your business, if you're not where you want to be in your personal brand, if you're not if, if you're not achieving the things that you want to be achieving, one of the first things you have to do is look at who you're spending your time with, right? Who are the people around you? I can guarantee you that the people you're spending time with are not people who have achieved those things. If you're spending time with people who have achieved those things, you will become that person. You will. It happens by default because you you absorb their mindsets, you absorb their tactics, their beliefs, their relationships, their 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 the things they focus on. You absorb those things, so you have to curate your own community. You have to curate your own community for your life. You have to hand select, deliberately choose, intentional and intentionally pick who you're spending time with, and that's another reason why. I mean, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, if you're not yet a member of Brand Builders Group, I'm going, the amount of money you have to invest to become one of our members is so minuscule, not only compared to what you'll learn and, and not only compared to what you'll earn as a result from what you'll learn, but it's so small just compared to the power of the network of the people you would meet. Like if you learned nothing from us, if you never implemented anything from us, the ROI you would receive just from being in the room with the people who are at our events, right? And who are on our virtual trainings and who are in our Facebook group is so tremendously powerful. Like it's huge because it's a community. It's a community of mission-driven messengers. It's a group. This is something we never anticipated when we started the company, never even thought about. It was like, wow, if we're successful, what will happen as a byproduct is we will have hundreds of people who are world changers, all who coalesce, like who all assemble in the same area. And it is incredible. Our members are incredible. Like the people we see in our Facebook group and in our community group and uh, on, on our virtual trainings and at our live events and on our virtual events. I mean, it blows my mind. The stories, I mean, our members are amazing. So you need to curate that community. And if you're trying to build your personal brand and you're trying to like use your personal brand to grow your business, then I, I cannot recommend enough going to freebrandcall.com forward slash podcast, request a call and find out how you can join our community. 
right? We have all different investment levels, right? Even we, we, we've designed this to be affordable for people who are even starting out in the very, very beginning. Cause that, that was me one day. That was us one day. Right. So we have a heart for that, for that early messenger. But like, if you're serious, like get serious and take that step, request the call, show up for the call, find out what the investment is, figure out what the right level is for you and get your butt to the community. Like get plugged in. If it's not with us, that's fine. Whatever your goal is though, whatever your dream is, whatever your mission is, whatever whatever is the thing you're wanting to achieve or accomplish or do or become, you have to surround yourself with other people who are trying to achieve or do or become those same things. The power of community. And this last one, this last one is I'm going to name this concept. I've never named this concept before, but I came up with a name for this. I've 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 thought about this a lot and I've uh talked about it some, but I'm going to officially give it a name right now. This is a this is a so officially a new concept that I'm introducing um formally is the concept of something that I'm going to call stand up speed. Stand up speed. What is stand up speed? Simple. Your stand-up speed is how fast do you stand up after you got knocked down? That's it. That's stand-up speed. How fast can you stand up after you get knocked down? How fast do you bounce back after you have failed? How fast do you make the next call after the last sales call rejected you? How fast do you post the next video after the last video flopped? How fast do you get on the next stage after your last stage bombed? Like how fast do you publish the next episode after the previous episode nobody listened to? Like that is stand-up speed. And those are practical, physical, external expressions of stand-up speed, right? Those are behavioral things that you could that you could notice and you could see and you could actually measure. But really where stand up speed really starts is in your mind it's in your mind it's going how long are you going to let something negative affect you before moving on from it that's your stand up speed like literally think about this you go there are things that happen every day that that suck right or aren't good like or or, or with some regularity there are things that happen uh, all the time, right? We we have stuff right now. We have we have this leak in the house. Uh, you know, we have a seven year old brand new house, like a very like pretty nice house, right? Custom built home. We have this huge leak that is like destroying a wall inside of the house. That we're like, okay, now we have to get this repaired. And you go, we did nothing to do that. Like it it, it was completely out of our control. Like we did nothing to deserve that. I don't think, right? Unless it's God or the universe going, you know, some 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 version of you know, like uh, what goes around comes around karma, like coming back to us. But like, we have this huge leak and you go, if you have a huge leak in your home, you know, we had a gas leak not too long ago. And I go, oh, you have a gas leak. Oh, uh, you have, uh, we had a flat tire. I had a flat tire not that long ago. Had a flat tire, right? Or you lose a customer or you lose an important engagement or you lose a team member, which is to me, one of the most devastating things is when I is when when we lose team members. That's like really devastating, right? Uh, you know, you go, okay, something negative happens. What your stand up speed is? What is the distance between, or the amount of time that passes between when the negative thing happens and you go, oh, this sucks. How much time passes between that and where you go? All right. I, I, all I can do is all I can do is control what I can tr control and move on to the next thing. Whatever that distance is there, that's your stand-up speed, right? That whatever that time lapse is, that that span between something bad happened and I'm immediately going into action mode about doing something about it and not only going into action mode about doing something about it, but I'm letting go of the negative thoughts and the negative energy that surrounded that event. What is that distance? That is your stand-up speed. And most people's stand-up speed is so slow. 
it's so slow. We think the reason we're not more successful in life is because like we can't go zero to 60. Like, man, if the, the key to being successful in life is like, if I could start a business in 90 days or I could make a million dollars in 90 days, that would make me successful. That's not the speed that matters. You can crawl like a turtle, you know, in that race and eventually win. That's all about consistency. The speed that matters, where speed matters when it comes to success is your stand-up speed. It's going, I got punched in the face. How fast did I punch back, right? I got knocked down. How fast did I stand back up? I got rejected. I got doors slammed in my face. How fast did I knock on another door? How fast did I make another phone call? That's the stand-up speed. And, and, and not just the behavior, but how quickly were you able to let go of, to release, to lose, to, to shed the negative energy, the negative thoughts, the negative patterns, the woe is me. Why did this happen to me? This is so terrible. This is so expensive. I'll never break free of this. All of the victim mentality that shows up, which is not unwarranted, right? I'm not saying you're weak for having those thoughts. You're human for having those thoughts. Those are normal things. But where your strength comes from is realizing that those negative thoughts don't serve you at all. Having the thoughts helps you zero. In fact, it makes it worse. There is nothing about a negative thought. There's nothing about negative energy, nothing about stewing, nothing about sulking, nothing about soaking inside of excuses or rationalizations or justifications or just things that, that you did nothing to deserve but were bad. There is nothing about sitting in that place of negativity that does anything to serve you, that does anything to help you achieve your goals, that does anything to help anyone else. It doesn't help you be successful. It doesn't help you make more money. It doesn't help you make more impact. It does nothing. All it does is keep you stuck and making you feel sorry for yourself. It's a victimhood. It is a victim mindset and going, how long am I going to allow something that happened to me in the past? How many days am I going to carry that forward? How many times am I going to take what was in the past and project it into my future? For how many minutes or, or moments, for how many moments or how many minutes or how many hours or how many days or how many years or how many decades are you going to carry that negative energy forward? Just answer the question, not to me, to yourself. How long are you going to allow that negative energy from that past situation claw at your future and pull you back? That's your stand-up speed. Because what do ultra performers do? They fail and forget, fail and forget, fail and forget, fail and forget, tragedy and forget, setback and forget. Somebody hurts them, forgive them and forget, forgive them and forget, forgive them and forget, fail and forget. Like their stand-up speed is like instantaneously, like instant, their, their stand-up speed is instantaneous. You go, flat tire, that sucks call a tow truck, pick up the spare, get an Uber, buy a new car, whatever it is. But you immediately go into action mode. And, and I'm not saying that it's, the life isn't hard. I'm not saying that things aren't unfair. I'm saying life is hard. I'm saying life is unfair always for everyone. Is it more unfair for some people than others? Sure. Maybe I, I yeah, I mean, probably so I would, I would buy into that, but is that what determines your success in life? No, I would, I would, I would rarely, on very rare occasion, I, I might, I might accept or acquiesce to that. But, but typically, no. I go, I know people who have, I know people who have overcome every setback. I know people who have been raped. I know people who have had family members murdered. I know people who have been spit on. I know people who've been called racial slurs. I know people who have gone bankrupt. I know people who have been homeless. I know people who never had a formal education. I know people who have been burned, have been, who are quadriplegics, who grew up without a mom or a dad. Like I know people like from almost every horrible situation you could think of. I know personally these type of people who have overcome it and been successful anyways, who have overcome it and survived, not just survived, but they have thrived anyways, not just thrive, but become world changers, multipliers, ultra performers, in spite of the fact of these setbacks, because they have extraordinary stand-up speed.
they quickly engage with what is proactive, productive, and positive. So what is your stand-up speed? How long are you going to let the negative things of the past affect you? How many times are you going to complain that you have too much work to do? How, I mean, how many years have to go by of you feeling busy before you stop telling people you're busy? How many, you know, days do you have to live feeling overwhelmed bef before you finally just go, I'm not overwhelmed. That just is what it is. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to go as fast as I can. Like how long are you going to allow negative energy to hold you back? Stand up speed. You need a faster stand-up speed. I need a faster stand-up speed. So much of my life I can look back as going, it has been, my mental toughness has been about this conditioning, this one skill is what is my stand-up speed? How fast can I go from a negative thing happen into productive, positive action? And not just action. Action is huge, right? But also shedding myself of the resentment, of the worry, of the fear, of the heartbreak, of the sadness, of the, of of this thing, and going, it, because it does nothing to serve me. Now, grief would be one exception. I think there is a time for grief that grief should happen when you experience loss and you go, yes, I'm going to grieve. I think that's a part of the healing process. But even that, at some point, you have to move on from. I mean, what are you going to do? Spend the rest of your life grieving about something you lost or someone you lost. I don't mean any disrespect to anyone who has lost someone. We've all lost people. But I think in many cases, the way to honor that person is to move forward and do something significant, maybe in their memory, in their honor. But I do think there's a, a, a there is you know a psychological place and a necessity for grief, but not forever, right? Now, how long? I don't know. You decide. But I go, how long is it really serving you? How long is it really serving you? I, I, I That's for you to figure out, right? I'm not telling you when or what's the right amount of speed, but I'm telling you when it comes to generally being successful in life, increasing your stand-up speed will radically transform the probability of you achieving the things that you want most in your life. This is not something in your DNA. This is something in your character. This is something you develop. This is something you code. This is something you drive with your own discipline. It's a decision you make. I am no longer going to allow myself to be affected by negative energy and negative things that happened in the past. I'm not going to allow myself to say I'm overwhelmed, I'm busy, I'm stressed, I'm frustrated, I'm tired. I, I, like It doesn't serve you. If it doesn't serve you, don't let it stay with you. If it doesn't serve you, don't let it stay with you. Stand up speed. Do it, my friend. That's all we got for this episode of the Influential Personal Brand Podcast. That was my rant. And I love you. And I'm talking to myself, right? I'm talking to myself. Going, Rory, you need to pick it up. Rory, you need to get you need to get up faster. You need to bounce back faster. You need to quit complaining. You need to quit sulking. You need to quit soaking. You need to quit whining about this or that or whatever. Just respond. Just re just respond to it. Deal with it and and focus on the things that that make a difference. So I'm on this journey with you and I'm grateful for that. And I'm I'm grateful for you being here. I hope you find it encouraging. Encouraging enough to share this with somebody who needs it. Share this with someone who a team of people who you know are going through something tough um, and keep coming back, will you? Uh, I appreciate it. Hey, leave us a review and a comment if you can. At some point, we'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, we'll catch you next time on the Influential Personal Brand Podcast.